Learning through play. Isn't that what we all want for our kids? We want them to learn as they are playing because that, my ladies, it is a true way of learning. But we need to dig deep down into what is play. But do we really know what that means? Well, today I'm going to walk you through what is the definition of play and how you can make play happen in your home. So if you're ready, let's get started. Hi, I'm Alexa. I'm a sensory teacher. I'm obsessed with all things play. And today I wanna to walk you through the five elements of play according to Peter Gray. According to Peter Gray, there are five elements that must be in, in a situation for true play to be really be happening. So we're gonna walk through, through each of them and I'm gonna show you exactly samples on how you can identify if what's happening at home or at your preschool, it is truly play. So the first thing is play is self-chosen and self-directed. Just because you tell them it is time to play with Play-Doh doesn't mean it's play, right? So what I use with this is I do an invitation to play. We invite them to play Play-Doh and it's okay if they don't want to do it. So you make your table very pretty, you make it very inviting and it is up to them if they wanna come join the table activity that you have prepared for them. So they have to be, they should be able to know when to start and when to stop. Like it's, it's their choice. Number two, it is in strength, in string, I can never say this word, in string, intrinsically. <laughs> it is intrinsically motivated, which means it has to come from within. They want to succeed. They want to play because it's something in they'll tell them they want that challenge, right? So it is the process how they get to the learning. It's more important than the process or like the end result. So if you see all those Pinterest crafts, it's not about getting that Pinterest craft all pretty and putting it in the refrigerator door. It is that process that you go through to actually get to the learning. Sometimes we will do art or craft and sometimes they'll just do a mud pile of nothing. And that's not important of the end result, right? Like sometimes there's nothing to take home to, nothing to hang in the refrigerator door. And that's okay because it's the process of doing the activity that it's most important when it comes to play. Not the end result, it's not winning the game, it's actually playing the basketball game, right? That's what they enjoy, it's the playing, it's, it's the running and doing the basket and blocking you know, your opponent. It's not, oh, we just win the game or lose the game, right? So it's that process. So always keep in mind, process is more important than product. Number three, players have their own rules. Have you sat with your toddler and try to play with them and they're like, no, 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 can't do it like that. No, 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 you can't do it like this. No, 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 you can't do. Or, you know, and, or if you see a group of kids together, maybe preschoolers, they come up with their own rules. Each of these games have their own rules, either made up by them or spoken or unspoken. Each game has some rules and they have to abide by it to make that play happen. Sometimes they're playing on their own. They make up their own rules, how they... Uh, put the blocks together in order for it to build a tower and they come up with those rules. Number four, play is imaginative, right? So play uses real materials from the real world. So they use real materials, but the world in which they are playing, it's like this pretend world. So we use our pretend kitchen to make pretend soup, right? So we're using real materials but our play, our scenario is from our imaginative world, right? We are coming up with the scenarios. We are pretending that these acorns are pasta for our friends. And those same acorns later on could be um, counters for money when you're playing a shop. So even two-year-olds know the difference between real and pretend, and that's very important to understand because they do come up with their own scenarios and they are able to use their imagination to create these different games. That's why open-ended toys are one of my favorite toys to provide you know, in the play area because this allows them for the child to really use their imagination and really come up with these games and really get into the flow of play. They are in charge of the toy and how the toy is used. And number five, we need minds that are active, but not stressed. 
They do it for the pleasure, not for the reward. So we are learning our letters because we want to learn our letters because the activity that we're working on is exciting for us, not because I'm afraid to fail, so then I'm all stressed about it, and I'm not doing it because I'm going to get a sticker at the end of the activity, right? They're going to do it because it is the process. So to recap, play is self-chosen and self-directed. Play is motivated by the means, more by the, not by the end. So it's intrinsically motivated. Play is guided by mental rules. Play is imaginative. And play is conducted from an alert state of mind, but not a stressed framework. So if you have those five elements, you are truly setting up scenarios for your child to have a world of play. So how do we get to learning through play and allowing these activities to do it? Well, and I will tell you that on our next video when we're going to talk about the learning aspect of learning through play. So I'll see you on the next one.